We reached a thousand subs! Yay! Just wanted to get my money's worth out of this thing. <laughs> Ah, Madagascar. I have so many fond memories of that game, from the blind guard to the explosions of excrement, and of course the highlight of the game, Pervy Pig. Oh. As expected, Escape to Africa is very similar, and features much of the same controls, with some new abilities too. Before we get going though, I just want to point out that, aside from some minor differences, the PS2 and PS3 copies of the game are essentially the same. So, like I did with my Monsters Inc. game review, I'll be using clips from both. Most of the PS2 clips will be in full screen, with this delightful decorated border. Isn't it lovely? But just to make double sure you know what you're looking at, the PS2 clips will be accompanied by this symbol, while the PS3 clips will be marked by this symbol. Get it? Got it? Good. Wicky wicky, eggs and steaky. The game begins with King Julian wanting to take photos for his new brochure. Madagascar, why not give King Julian your vacation money? I must say I'm rather disappointed that the voiceover for Julian in this game is actually a decent cover this time. The budget Baron Cohen in the first game was simply iconic. Juicy sweet, juicy sweet. This guy here is funny, but genuinely funny. Funny, not ironically funny. I don't know. I don't know that this really works for me. It's just too good. I suggest you stop talking and we move on. Okay, fine. The first task is to use Alex to catch some butterflies. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> it's not the most gripping or groundbreaking of activities, but it makes for one hell of a good photo, apparently. Yes, yes, move it. Well, not really. But at least we get to see the photo on a PS3. Not sure why this was beyond the capabilities of a PS2, but no matter. You're really not missing out. Anyway, soon afterwards, we're also introduced to the most prolific, but not the most original collectible, coins. <laughs> Bronze coins are worth 1 point, while silver ones are worth 5, and the rare gold ones are worth 10. Collecting enough coins allows you to buy extra stuff from the duty-free shop on the map. Hello. Hey! Where you can even buy a monkey gallery, which is pointless right now as we have no monkeys. Why the hell did I buy this thing? I thought there'd be monkeys, damn it! That's false advertising! And by the way, as with the first game, this game has an autosave feature. After completing every task, this little rotating hippo symbol will appear. Depending on the version you play, it might be a different colour, but it's otherwise the same. Bizarrely, when you go to quit the level, this urgent message appears. <laughs> Are you sure you want to quit to the map? Any unsafe progress will be lost! Do I? I don't know! Oh, go on then. I quit. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Oh, it's auto-saving anyway. What was the point of that? Anyway, eventually we find Marty, who's been scarfing down carrots to earn a super fast sprint ability. Catch, catch, catch. Oh, you're pretty fast, Marty, but I bet you can't catch me. Yeesh, and I thought Mort couldn't get any creepier. Wrong! I was wrong, Mort. I was indeed wrong. Kill it with fire. <laughs> After Marty essentially took the helm of the last game, here he's been relegated to bit parts and minigames. Now and again Marty needs to complete races, and to practice we simply need to beat Mort. <laughs> Collecting carrots fills your sprint meter, which allows you to sprint really fast, and make a lot of unnecessary noise while doing so. Next we get to practice using Marty's kick ability by bursting some balloons to free some lemurs trapped in the air. Although if we're just going to pop the balloons, surely they may as well just jump down. There we go, job done. Hope you survived your injuries. Alex also has the same roar ability that he had in the first game, and here you get to practice using it by scaring some birds away from Julian's, uh, precious rocks. We're also introduced to a new ability, the zip vine. It seems they abandoned the idea of collecting three power cards to earn a new ability. Which is all for the better, I'd say, as it was fairly pointless. Much of the time they practically handed them to you anyway. You did very well, but unfortunately, you're not a hippo. Yeah, and after months of being locked inside with little else to do but eat and drink myself into a coma, this is something of a marvel! Alex isn't the only one to have new abilities. Gloria can now swim. Pressing X allows her to swim faster, while Square makes her dive underwater for extra coins and secrets. <laughs> Here we simply have to complete the swimming race against Julian. We then learn how to dive, sort of. Only they don't seem to tell you all the controls, so you just have to kind of wing it. Fortunately, diving events aren't all that prolific. It's mostly just practice for a minigame accessible from the main menu. Which I only ever bothered to access once, because it was really quite boring. 
It seems the mini games have taken a bit of a nosedive since the last game. I love that they give you a choice of hippo to play as for this game, even though a hippo is a hippo. Really, what difference does it make? Here we don't need to do any tricks, we just have to perform a high dive for a photo. Hope you're paying attention, Julian, because I'm not doing this more than once. <laughs> Did you just take a picture after the dive? Unbelievable! As you can see, many of my royal subjects are currently floating in mid-air when they really should be underground licking my toes. We then need to use Melman like a helicopter to burst some more balloons. <laughs> yes, that's right! They brought it back! Because this was such a prominent feature in the movies, how could they not? <laughs> hey, did we see the same movie? The final photo Julian needs is of a soccer tournament. Which is suspiciously reminiscent of Bugs and Taz. Yeah. We then need to prepare the plane for launch. But there's a problem. Look, sir, it's a mole, and he's stealing parts of the plane. Yep, those bastard moles are back. <laughs> Melman needs to dispose of them with his head bash and floor buffer technique. <laughs> I'm not sure what the obsession with mole murder is all about, but once again they bear the brunt of my mindless violence. <laughs> Gloria then gets her Nicki Minaj on and needs to butt bounce some suitcases ready for their flight. Which we then need to load onto the plane using Marty's kick. Yeah, he definitely gets the award for participation. The important thing is, you tried. Nice going, Marty. I'm heading topside now. Come on up when you're ready. Is he okay? Mort's speaking in tongues, apparently. Once at the top, we need to use Alex to find some ropes to tie, which boils down to a dull button sequence game. Thrilling! Here we also learn how to use the balance beams, which simply requires you to keep Alex balanced using the analog stick as you walk across. Pretty much just like Remy in Ratatouille. Ow. I find it quite amusing that if you do fall, you die and respawn, when you can leap from great heights in this game with no consequences. Gravity in this game is a mystery to me. That and on a PS2, this balancing is rather irritating as Alex seems to keep jumping every so often. It's as though the game thinks I'm wanting to make a U-turn all the time. Will you stop that? This is the last thing I want you to do. What I'm asking you to do is actually far simpler. Anyway, with the ropes tied, we need to use Melman to head bash the rivets into place. That sure sounds painful. Although I did nothing to help the situation myself as I bashed his head an unnecessary number of times. Sorry about that yet. Yeesh, don't give yourself a concussion, buddy. One too many bangs to the head and you'll wind up like Mort. <laughs> Next, we need to throw Mort at some targets. Whee! If you manage to hit the center of a target, you're rewarded with coins. Whee! But it's so awkward to aim. I swear you either have to be bloody good at this or just plain lucky. <laughs> What? Oh, I did it! Oh, I mean, of course I did. I'm just so supremely talented, obviously. <clears throat> Gloria then needs to haul some vines towards the plane ready for launch using the peppers. Oh, yeah. Once this is done, we can finally leave Madagascar. So long, my second home. I'll miss you all. Pervy pig, the fusa, th the giant spiders. <laughs> Actually, you know what? This place was fucking awful. It's about time we left. So anyway, we then arrive in Africa. Well, I mean, technically we already were in Africa, but this place is more... Africa-ish. We join Alex and Melman in trying to find where we are. Oh, what do you suppose that is, Melman? Hmm, I'm gonna guess something terrible, Alex. First, we need to make our way to the top, disposing of the scorpions using mangoes and our roar. Once at the top, we can only progress further once Melman has hurled some durians at yet more scorpions. I bet scorpions don't like to get pelted with fruit. Wait, hold up. Just a few minutes ago, you didn't know what these things were. Whoa. What do you suppose that is, Melman? Who's in charge of continuity? We need words. This section is essentially a rehash of the previous game. <laughs> But then things change up a little, as Melman is required to ride a boulder to the end of the level to clear a path. <laughs> this level goes on for a while, as you need to push the rocks onto the geysers to make a geyser powerful enough to raise yourself to higher ground. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. And yes, it's about as boring as it sounds. Rock and roll! <laughs> We eventually arrive at the watering hole, which is essentially the hub world. Here we find a camera with which we need to take photos of various animals. Yes, yeah, so we escape the confines of a zoo to uh, pretend to be at another zoo. Excellent! 
Well, that would be a great photo of a rhino if you hadn't stood directly in front of him. Amateurs! As expected, here we meet Moto Moto, who takes a shine to Gloria. Some guys like the badonka donk, but me, I like the badonka donk. A uh, donk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no! What on earth? What could that possibly mean? And we can take a picture of him too. A Moto Moto photo, if you will. Oh, it says that. You just stole my joke. Bitch. After using some bees to send this rhino into a frenzy. Ah, bees! Can't stand bees. We can progress further and perform some more mindless mini-games. Race! 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 Marty has a zebra race level, which to my recollection is the only Marty race besides a training level. Oh yeah! I guess they just wanted him to feel included, bless him. There's also Melman's Clinic, in which you need to use various medicines to treat the afflictions of the sick giraffes. Yeah, Melman's a doctor now. Who better to treat the ailments of fellow giraffes than a hypochondriac, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've just given this guy an overdose. Nah, he'll be fine. As in the first game, now and again you'll come across totems, which can be used to switch characters. Which is cool and all, but this might just be me, but I really wish there were more of them. There were several occasions when I needed a certain character for a particular task, and I had to repeatedly return to the same out of the way location just to switch characters. And by that time I've pretty much forgotten why I needed them. W why am I the hippo again? As we know by now, Gloria has the same abilities as in the first game, minus the mole crushing hip check move. Man, I missed that move. Charging into boulders around here with the peppers will open secret areas. Behind which Moto Moto seems to be standing for absolutely no reason. You put the I in B I G. Thanks? Th that's a compliment? I also really don't understand why they give you the opportunity to play as Marty in this game. Aside from the running and kicking mini games, he genuinely can't do anything. He's been stripped of all the abilities he possessed in the first game, so he's essentially useless. I mean, you can buy some sunglasses for him, I guess. That's. That's something. Hey, you know what? That's not a bad idea, actually. He is, after all, hard to tell apart from the other zebras. Go on, then. I'll splash out. Oh, for God's sake. Trust me to choose to wear these the day every other zebra decides to wear the exact same sunglasses. What are the chances? In the shop, you can also buy accessories for the other characters, including a witch doctor hat for Melman, a snorkel for Gloria, and a giant foam finger for Alex, which for some reason is a different color in a PS3 game. What an unexpected bonus. This game was totally worth playing twice. While exploring, Alex thinks he recognizes his dad. Hey, wait a minute. Is that... No, it couldn't be. It literally just looks like a lion. I don't care if you've got 2020 vision or what, there is no way in hell you could recognize anyone from that distance. That guy's different than us. Let's tease him. Okay, so now we need to avoid the fruit being flung at us as we try and reach the top. And that's surprisingly far easier than it sounds considering the amount of lions blocking our path. You only have to throw one fruit at them to make them cower in submission. <laughs> These are the worst lions ever. Dad! Son! Welcome back to the Pride! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you say welcome back to the Pride, he must prove himself in the rites of passage. We then partake in a number of inaugural activities to prove our worthiness. First, we simply need to chase down and retrieve some lion cubs, which is simple enough, although when you collect them, they stay on the screen for an oddly long time for some reason. Make your Pride proud. Well, go on. Piss off. I was kind of hoping Makunga would pose more of a threat to us, especially as he's pretty much the closest thing the movie has to a villain. Sadly, there's no boss level like the one in the first game, but I'm sure that this game will deliver something just as gritty. Musical chairs. Bring it on! When the music stops, the idea is to... I don't think I need to go into detail, do I? As lame as this might look, I I actually enjoyed this. Though considering my age, I really feel as though I have a massively unfair advantage. Yes, yes, I did it! Yeah, really, don't get too cocky, mate. You've pretty much just ruined the kid's party. A couple of the challenges simply see you having to scale some walls. And yes, this noise gets really annoying. There's also a game of dodgeball, without the balls. I got a mango with your name on it, and it's extra soft. We then need to complete an obstacle course in a time limit. Which really isn't all that difficult considering they immediately correct you if you fall off the trail. Where's the challenge? That was amazing, son. Are you drunk? Can I join you? After this, we need to play Hot Durian, which sees us having to pass a durian fruit and make sure we're not holding it when it explodes. And the final task is to traverse a canyon, during which your dad gives you some last minute tips. All right, son. This is the last right. All you have to do is run and jump to the behind point in the ride. Not a clue. Once Alex makes it to the top, he needs to scream a memorable catchphrase. Um, how about. 
I, I like, like soup. Oh no. I'm afraid that simply isn't going to cut it. Makunga, I think you're having a stroke. Anyway, after this, we return to the watering hole and switch to Gloria. First, Chi and Maurice need to defeat a fruit flinging crocodile and his pals as they've taken over the watering hole. Not a patch on Mr. Me Alligator. No, of course not. Mm. That was pretty fine, baby. Moto Moto then requests that you follow him to his crib. Okay, so we'll just swim around here and... Oh, well that was easy. Time for a tea break, I guess. Before I take you to my crib, I want to pick up some pearls and make a necklace for the hippo I love the most. Oh, that's sweet. I pick them up myself, but it turns out I'm allergic to clamshells. Could you shut them out for me, honey buns? Right. So I'm essentially going to be making my own necklace then. Great. This is the worst date I've ever been on. Well, it's in the bottom 10 anyway. First, you need to swim around collecting the pearls. <laughs> then we need to procure some green peppers from the crocodiles so we can use them to open up the path to the next level. We can do this by blowing bubbles at them. <laughs> Yeah, the crocs aren't as formidable as it used to be. Think it's time for some retraining. Lax on, lax off. Once we reach the surface, we meet other female hippos, all vying for the attention of Moto Moto. Have you guys seen Moto Moto around here? He was right behind me. Oh, really? He's usually right behind me. <laughs> it's your lucky day, baby bottoms. What did you just call me? Baby bottoms. Don't you ever call me that again. You're gonna get to check out what a smooth operator I am on the high dive. I don't know. You'd have to be pretty smooth to impress me. Watch me, baby. Oh, great. Now he's wiggling his hippo tits at me. Ugh, I'm feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> Can we skip this level? We then have to take control of Moto Moto himself as we have to perform a dive to impress Gloria. This is great and all, but um, where's my necklace, bitch? Did we just do some labor for nothing? Welcome to my garden. <laughs> or what would be a garden if it weren't so dry. We then come across a fellow female hippo who needs help reviving her plants. Maybe you could help me. What? Why? Do you fancy me now too? Well, you've got more going for you than horny, horny hippo tits. <laughs> this gripping task sees Gloria water the lady hippo's garden. The lady hippo also coyly giggles when you spray her. <laughs> I swear I'm not making this up. This isn't like my weird lesbian hippo fantasy or something. With the garden revived, we can use the pepper to charge into this cave where Moto Moto is already waiting. Somehow. Welcome to Juicy Juicy. A game where you lucky ladies compete for the ultimate prize. Me. This is a challenge to be the first hippo to collect a number of pineapples in your cart. But watch out as the others will play dirty and steal your fruit. <laughs> Once this is over, we can take part in a bowling game, which I'm not bowled over by myself. The idea is to get a strike by rolling into the vases, but it's hard to do so when after every unsuccessful bowl, it insists on playing the same jingle every single time. Pretty close, but we need closer. How was that pretty close? I didn't even roll. Hey, Glorilicious. You and your nicknames, oi. Hey, whatever happened to that necklace you promised me? Look, I gotta be straight with you. That necklace was for me. The next one I pick up can be yours, though. What will it take for you to dump this guy? He's literally manipulated us into making him a necklace. Mm. Anyway, as it turns out, Melman is onto the horny horny hippo and plots to sabotage his plans with Gloria by exposing him as the player he really is. Be careful not to let him see you. And if he does see you, this conversation never happened. As Julian, we need to sneak around with the camera and take photos of him wooing the other lady hippos. Uh, say cheese? No pictures. Damn it. Sadly, Gloria doesn't take Melman's actions very well, prompting Melman to go and commit suicide. Jesus Christ, this got dark fast. Before Melman can throw himself into the volcano, Horny Horny Hippo returns again. Now that I've heard you flap your lips, how good are you at shaking your hips? Moto Moto challenges Melman to a dance-off, which is kind of like what happens in the movie. Well, not really, but they tried. Well, not really. Oh, uh, but we need a judge. Ah, no, I did not need to see that. Put it away, man. The idea here is to move the analog sticks in the right positions to catch the blue blob things. If you miss too many, the rock you're standing on will start to crumble. Oh, 
Getting so many combos in a row also makes Moto Moto lose his balance and can earn you coins. Though personally I find this stuff really distracting and it breaks my flow. You don't want to interrupt this dancing. I mean just look. I'm a professional clearly. The crocodile judge calls the winner, which sees the loser plummet to his demise with a blood curdling scream. Well. Ah. What was that? Ah. That was one of the worst screams I've ever heard. Ah. Tarzan, show him how it's done. Yeah. That's more like it. And with this story arc concluded, Melman and Gloria then proceed to make some absolutely hideous babies. <laughs> The end. Is what I'd like to say, but there's a lot more left, unfortunately. Before we continue with the main plot, if there is one, there's also a really random short level in which you need to control Mort and avoid all the dangers to return him to the watering hole. <laughs> This level is frankly horrible. It's so easy to slip up and get eaten. And every time you do, that irritating jingle plays. Ugh. Mort has a roll move, which can be used to satiate the appetite of a hungry croc. But it's so easy to lose control of the roll. I accidentally rolled into the croc's mouth several times. Maybe he just couldn't take this terrible game anymore. I was a little confused by the honeycomb section of this level. I passed through here perfectly fine without a problem in both versions of the game, and yet for some reason they consider the fact that I made it through alive to be something worth celebrating? <laughs> I, I don't know what I just did. Bizarrely, the PS3 version also features a random pinball game at the very end of the level. <laughs> I'm not sure why this couldn't have been possible in the PS2 version, but it's not that great a loss. Anyway, finding the wire cutters for the penguins unlocks the penguin caper level, in which you take control of private in order to skulk around a human camp looking for supplies. <laughs> Though what exactly they intend to do with all these soccer balls is beyond me. Like Skipper in the first game, you can slide into enemies and give them a slap. Enemies here include frilled lizards, who I'm fairly certain are not native to Africa. You shouldn't be here. I mean, neither should we really, but we're staying, so piss off. We can not only take out lizards in this fashion, but also grown men. Plastic, more guards. And they've spotted us. Are they not the least bit suspicious as to why there are penguins on the African plains in the first place? <laughs> so yeah, despite the different setting, this feels essentially the same as the penguin level in the first game. Ah, but sadly there's no big burly toilet attendant this time around. No Big Louie, which is a shame as you know we stole the show last time. Big Louie owns this game! Yeah, sorry folks. As with Pervy Pig, he didn't make it to the sequel. Lest we forget. Aha, but don't worry, there's a suspiciously similar looking chap equally as burly. Oh, jolly good. Maybe they're related. Let's call him Big Stewie. Skipper, I can use my fishing training here too. Give it a shot, Private. Here we need to fish for more supplies, avoiding Big Stewie's dog, who we can later lure into the bathroom. Once we're done here, we need to free an alligator to clear out the gift shop. Just don't fall down. That would be bad. Aye aye, Skipper. Once you free the gator, this is kind of fun. The idea is simply to scare everyone away and then make off with all the items. We then need to sneak past Big Stewie and hijack a car. After I mount these wheels, we'll be ready to rock and roll. While Kowalski mounts the wheels, we need to fling cans at the people trying to steal the tires from us. I got it! Oh my god, look at all the big stewies! What is this, a family reunion? With the car operational, the next level sees you're having to chase the convoy and destroy the trucks for their parts to be able to fix the plane. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, that the penguins are trying to build a plane. Minor detail I omitted there. The driving controls here are pretty dire. It's not the worst thing I've played, but the physics are a little off. <laughs> We'll begin repairs as soon as we hire some monkey workers. Okay, so this is where the game changes into one big monkey hunt. These monkeys are scattered throughout most of the levels, and when you find them, they do a cute little dance and are later viewable in the monkey gallery. You can also buy accessories and furnishings for their little cages, and also feed them bananas. Ooh, sorry. Anyway, you can find monkeys almost everywhere, and I mean that. Some can be earned as rewards for dancing well enough against Moto Moto. Others can even be found underwater. That's stupid. Monkeys don't live underwater, unless they're sea monkeys. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Yeah, they're probably gonna drown at some point. <laughs> or starve to death. But hey, we can buy some decoration for their cages. At least they'll die looking fabulous. Some can even be found in Melman's clinic, swallowed by some of the giraffe patients. There might be another that portion I'll get somewhere. And the fact that we have a cure for this says to me that this is somehow a regular occurrence. What have these giraffes been doing? Oh, and by the way, there's also another penguin fishing activity, which is essentially the same as the first game. Only this time we also get to fish for monkeys. Well done, Price. That ought to hold us for a little while. Wait. What? That ought to hold us for a little while. You're planning to eat the monkeys? Whoa, no, I had no part in this. Anyway, regardless of what the penguins' intentions are, there are 100 monkeys in total. After collecting 10 of them, we can practice using the protoplanes. Collecting bananas increases your monkey power, which allows you to fly for longer for some of the later challenges. Once this is over with, we need at least 20 monkeys to progress. But once you return, it turns out the monkeys are on strike. So you need to do the next task anyway. So what was the point in spending my entire afternoon looking for monkeys? Anyway, we need to use Melman's boulder riding activity to crush all the junk in the area, avoiding the rhinos. If I were in better health, I'd put up quite a fight. And the last task sees you're having to use a monkey in a matching game. After the practice round, you need to beat a fellow monkey. Not that kind of beat, you ruffian. I'm not sure why losing this game would be such a bad thing. I mean, regardless, the parts get matched and we're a step closer to our goal. This really doesn't make much sense. Anyway, once the plane is finished and we have enough monkeys, we're faced with a new dilemma. Maurice, show them. All the water in the watering hole is dried up. <sighs> what am I looking at? PS3 enlighten us. All the water in the watering hole is dried up. Ah, yes, that is tragic. Can we leave now? As it turns out, someone has built a dam, and we need to use the plane to destroy it. Hey, remember the gritty final boss of the first game? The mighty King Fusa? The follow-up game surely has to offer better than that, right? <laughs> or not. She's a psycho. Yes, indeed, the old lady is back. What was once an annoying side joke in the first movie is now a major plot point in the sequel. Nobody asked for this. Nobody. Now that we've dammed up this lake, those mangy creatures on the nature preserve will be forced to find a new watering hole and leave this area for us. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, this subplot came right the hell out of nowhere. So it turns out the old lady is trying to steal the land for herself. Africa not big enough for you, hun? Anyway, first we need to destroy their village, which actually sounds like it should be tougher than collapsing the dam, but okay. Would it hot some paint? Then we need to destroy some balloons carrying durians, and then use the durians to destroy the old lady's hut. Or with Marty's kick ability. Yeah, remember that? It's been a while, right? Anyway, the final part of the game sees us destroy the dam. Good. Gloria will attack the dam from underwater, making it vulnerable so that you can smash it. Now you can hit the dam. Meanwhile, the people will attempt to rebuild their dam using projectile logs, and that crazy old woman will also fire missiles at you in the process. What's wrong with this woman? She needs a hobby. That's how you with the watering hole back to normal, Gloria and Melman finally get their happy ending. I think we got a lot to celebrate. So let's party! Yeah, you have to imagine them partying, I guess. Unless this credit scene counts as a party. All right! Yeah, this is a pretty weak party. I see you're all practicing social distancing. I think I'll sit this one out. Bye! But if you want a better party, there's something called the Africa Arcade in the main menu. This not only includes games of musical chairs and hot durian, but there's also a mini golf game. I didn't know you were a professional. In my opinion, it's not quite as good as the first game, but it's not too bad, despite some excruciatingly irritating holes. Believe me, an irritating hole is something you absolutely don't want. And if that's not your cuppa, there's also a really boring game of chess, which I haven't really given much of a chance yet. And I'll be honest, I don't think I ever will. It just doesn't have the same appeal as a shuffleboard from the first game. Overall, the minigames are pretty standard, but nothing too horrendous. That was pretty fine, baby. This game feels as though it's trying really hard to replicate the same feel-good wacky aesthetic of the first installment, and it succeeds to an extent. But the fact is that the new minigames aren't quite as fun, and those that are the same just come across as inferior imitations. It's not awful, I did enjoy it, but it doesn't quite match the standard of the original. I also thought that the first game did a much better job of giving each character ample amounts of screen time. Here, Marty may as well not be playable at all. He barely does anything. And, um, did we forget about Alex's story arc? He just seemed to 
to meet his drunk dad, perform the rites of passage, and then he just kinda got pushed into the background. Anyway, the important thing is the gameplay, which is of a good standard. Not great, but good. Although that's mostly because it derives a lot from the first game. It's a classic case of a video game trying to sell itself as superior by adding some fresh moves, new minigames, better graphics, and uh, monkeys. Monkeys are always a good thing, but as usual I have to say I prefer the original. Regardless, this is still a pretty solid movie game packed with material, even if it's not quite as crack a lack -a. Take it away, hippo tits! Hey everyone, thanks for watching. A big, big thank you for 1,000 subscribers. I know you're probably thinking this is a little overdue since my subscriber count seems to have shot up in the last month, but I really wasn't anticipating that. And despite the length of this video, there are plenty of deleted scenes from this one that I will be uploading, I'm thinking, in the next week or so. So if you haven't checked it out yet, and I know you haven't because nobody has, be the first, go on. You can head on over to my Patreon and take a look at those. There are quite a few clips from this review that I actually really wanted in the video but they just didn't quite fit or it was just overly long so feel free to take a look i'll be back eventually bye bye for now bye